If you're wondering why I have a crying Tobey Maguire on this slide, it's because we're now going to review the syllabus. Nobody likes reviewing the syllabus. I, you know, we all hate it the first week of class. Well, I shouldn't say that because there's always at least one student in a class who will be like, I like syllabus, I like syllabus review, which if that's you, that's awesome. You're about to have a lot of fun. Uh, if that's not you, please still pay attention and don't just fast forward through this video. The syllabus, I try to do a lot of work to make that syllabus a really good practical guide to how to get a good grade in this class. And so please do look through that syllabus and I'll highlight a few key parts, okay? So let's go over to the syllabus itself. Um, it's got my name, it's got my phone number, my work phone. Please don't use my work phone. Um, please use my work email. Uh, that is a much more reliable way to get a hold of me, particularly right now during the pandemic where oftentimes people might work. I might be working from home some of the time, so please just use my email as a much better way to get a hold of me. I've got my office location there. It's 225 Ward Building in KPC. Um, for those of you who are located elsewhere, such as Anchorage, we can also meet by Zoom. And in fact, on Blackboard, I've got a Zoom link already that you can click on, and that will be kind of like how you can meet with me during office hours. Office hours are Thursdays, 1 to 3 8 p.m. Um, now, I understand that that works very well for me because it's the middle of my workday, but I understand that by that same logic, it's also the middle of many of your workdays. And so if that doesn't work well for you, please just shoot me an email and we'll figure out another time that we can meet. Okay, even if we have to kind of figure out a kind of funky time uh, because of work schedules, we'll figure out a time. I don't want you to feel like we can't. Um, got a course description there, course prereqs. There are no prereqs. Um, we've got student outcomes, things that you should hope to get out of this course. I've also got a note here about the textbooks. There's two required textbooks. The first one is edited by Maria Chatla Williams, um, who's a UAA professor, and it's the Alaska Native Reader, History, Culture, and Politics. I'm quite fond of this book. The other is edited by Libby Roderick, although a number of people contributed to the book. It's called Alaska Native Cultures and Issues, Responses to Frequently Asked Questions. Um, you should be able to find both um, either in a number of different ways, whether that's ordering through UAA, but that's also um, whether you're going to third-party websites like Amazon, you should be able to find these relatively cheap. Well, I guess that's kind of a loaded term. I should say you should be able to find these typically under 50 or $60. I've tried to choose more affordable options. Having said that, I've definitely been in the place where I was, you know, struggling to put myself through college and had to decide which books I could afford to buy and which books I couldn't because I also needed money for, you know, things like food and rent. And so if that's you and you can't afford both books, get the Williams book. We rely on it more heavily in class. Um, the Roderick book is really helpful, but if you can only afford one book, do the Williams book. Okay. Another reason why you can get away with not buying the Roderick book, if you absolutely can't, is because if you go to the UA library website, you can find an ebook version of that. Now the rub there is that only one person can use it at a time. So if somebody else is choosing to use the book at that point, you can't. Uh, so I want to bank on that for like a test. But generally speaking, my test questions aren't going to contain some obscure fact from the Roderick book. The Roderick book is more supplementary and expanding on what I've talked about. So um, I can think of like one or two really specific questions where you're like, oh man, I really wish I had the Roderick book. But generally speaking, you would be okay in a test setting without it. So again, if you can only afford one, do the Williams book. Uh, but if you can't afford both, get both. They're both great books and will definitely um, help you learn this material. Um, there's not an attendance requirement. These are pre-recorded lectures that you watch at your own convenience during the week. Um, required written work. So basically your entire grade is out of a thousand points. I do that intentionally so it makes it really easy to figure out what your final grade is because you just drop a zero and right, it makes it into base 100. So 900 points and above is an A, 800 points and above is a B and so forth. Um, you have three tests which together are worth 60% of your grade. Then you've got a research paper, which is worth another 20% of your grade. There's a research paper description on Blackboard, and I've also got a video up about it. But basically, the research paper, you're going to do a three to four page single spaced research paper where you're going to choose a specific Alaska Native people or group, such as, for example, Inupiaq, such as, for example, Shukpiaq. Um, Dena'ina, and so forth. Or you might even get more specific and focus on a specific village corporation or a specific tribe, such as Kenites, the Indian tribe. You're going to do some research on the traditional kind of culture and history of that, or traditional culture of that group. And then you're going to do some research also on sort of a contemporary topic going on in that community. 
And that's going to be what the paper is about. So more details to come. There's also this, sorry, with the research paper, most people do quite well on the research paper. If you put an effort to it, generally speaking, you're going to do quite well. Um, so, and we'll talk as we go on about sort of ways to make sure that you get the most points possible. It's usually a part of the class people really like because you get to kind of do a deep dive in one of the groups that you find interesting. There are also four written assignments. They're typically kind of two to three paragraph long, like a writing prompt, and then you respond to it with two to three paragraphs. Uh, the first two and then the last are discussion boards, and then the third one is related to your research paper. Um, as far as late work, it's 10% penalty per day, um, unless it's excused. So do you have, if you have some kind of emergency or a life situation and you need an extension, just email me, okay, adunston at alaska.edu. I'm, I think, a pretty accommodating professor, okay, so, so please let me know if something's going on. I can often make extensions. Um, I can't always, obviously, but I, I can often make extensions. And so when you do that, though, keep the email and also make a note of your extension when you turn in the work. Like just put at the top of your research paper, hey, we talked about this by email. I have a two day extension. OK, um, so if so, sometimes you can get an extension so that I don't take off 10 percent per day tests. Generally speaking, you need I give you like several, several days to do them. So generally speaking, you won't need extensions because you'll have tests open for like multiple like weeks that you could take it. However, if there is some sort of true emergency preventing you, like I was planning on taking it that night and ended up in the hospital, just email me, okay? Um, and let's talk about it and see whether or not an extension would be warranted. Extra credit. I'll let you know if there's extra credit. There's at least a couple of extra credits that'll come up. Um, one is a mid-semester survey, and one has to do with an end-of-semester survey. There may be, a, I think there's one other one too. Yeah, there is one other one, yeah, related to a language uh, video that you'll watch much later in the semester. Um, don't be a cheater. Nobody likes cheating, right? I don't want to get to a hospital someday needing to get my appendix removed and then find out that my surgeon was the jerk who cheated in their college classes. So just don't cheat. Um, because it's a terrible way to learn. Uh, don't plagiarize. This tends to be one area where I'm quite the stickler. So just don't pl plagiarize. Don't cheat. I reserve the right to give zeros on assignments if you plagiarize or cheat. Um, or just a failing grade in the class as necessary and or a referral to the university as necessary. Um, class atmosphere and safety. This doesn't come up a ton in a class like ours, but it still is important to note, um, particularly with those discussion boards. I do reserve the right. I've I had this happen like once, it, very rare, maybe like once every couple of years, but I do reserve the right to delete a comment if you do something that's really kind of inappropriate, right? So one kind of inappropriate is like, I had somebody one time try to sell their vape paraphernalia, uh, I guess, um, on a discussion board, so obviously deleted that. Um, so nothing inappropriate like that, like sale, selling things. But also, you know, just being respectful towards other people, especially because we're talking about cultural diversity. I ask that people, you know, speak professionally. Think about, like, how would you talk in a workplace setting, right? Um, how would you talk if you knew people from that community were right there in the room with you? And so just speak politely, respectfully, um, you know, avoid things that you know to be pejoratives or slurs or things like that, definitely. Um, and, you know, anthropology, it's... Um, one of those things where as we're talking about cultures, you know, kind of try to avoid stereotypes unless you're critiquing the stereotype, but try not to be sort of reproducing stereotypes. Um, obviously no threatening or harassing or mocking of other students. Uh, if you have a disability accommodation, please just let me know. I'll give you that information as soon as possible. Um, I tend to um, try to be really accommodating with that as well. Uh, and just to let everybody know, I myself have... Um, both anxiety and depression. And so um, I try to mention that just so that people feel comfortable um, if they have an accommodation specifically related um, to those types of accommodations. Okay, so just please know that I'm like a, a for lack of a better word, safe person that you can come to and talk about this stuff. It is really helpful though that you go through the disability office, the DSS, because they'll type it all up in a formal way and I can, you know, I'm not a doctor myself, so that'll help me know like the exact best way to do an accommodation. So I'm not sort of having to guess at what the best way to do the accommodation is. Um, next is a outline and it will tell you each week, right? Our weeks run from Monday to Sunday. So what that means 
I mean, really, everything's already all open anyways, generally speaking, but in theory, you start on the Monday and then you turn stuff in on the Sunday. Um, and so it'll tell you the module, which means like the recorded lectures that are due, that you can watch that week. And then it'll tell you the readings that you should be doing that week. And I'll try to tell you how many pages there are. I try to keep the readings to a reasonable level. No matter how much I reduce the readings, there's always some people that put on my rate, my professor, like, get ready to read. So I don't know if I'm doing too many, but I try to keep it under like 30 like 35 kind of max kind of pages. So hopefully you feel like I was fair there. Some weeks it'll be a lot less. Like this first week, it's about 13 pages. And then over here, you have assignments due. Um, when it says W on the readings, that means the Williams book, the big book. When it says R, it means the Roderick book, the smaller book. When it says BB, it means Blackboard. It means that you can find the readings online through Blackboard under the modules folder. So you'll notice that we have kind of unit one is a lot of foundational topics, like kind of an overview of the different Alaska Native groups. We'll talk about the colonialism side of things. We'll talk about ANCSA and Alaska Native corporations. Um, unit two, we're going to get into a bunch of specific cultural groups. And then unit three, we will be talking about some sort of bigger overarching concepts. So each unit has like five modules. Um, at the end of each unit is a test going over that specific unit. Um, the finals week, there is a sort of kind of final. And what I mean by that is there is a test due that week, but it's not a cumulative final. It's just over unit three. Um, other policies, most of this stuff doesn't super apply unless you're going on to KPC campus for some reason. And obviously, if you are in Anchorage, there will be specific policies for Anchorage that you should be aware of. Um, but be aware of these, look through these policies, um, things that keep us safe, keep you safe, make sure it's a safe, healthy community for everybody. Um, that's it. All right. See, Toby, it wasn't even that bad.